Well, good afternoon, all of you out there in the big wide world. I'm sitting outside today because it is beautiful, but it is freezing. <laughs> um, maybe not quite 32 degrees, but pretty close. Um, so today I'm going to give everyone a little bit of a history lesson. A history lesson on Halloween. So, um, bear with me. I actually made a lot of notes. Um, and if you can't stick with it, you can always come back and rewatch it. But I thought, well, you know, Halloween is such a interesting, it's not a holiday in the way that we know holidays, but it is definitely a day that we all are aware of and um I just I just think that probably most of us have no clue what it really even is how it came to be and why we do what we do when it comes to Halloween okay so um I got a lot of my information actually from the history channel and little pieces here and there so this isn't some religious organization that's putting out what I'm going to give you some of these details on today. I don't know if that makes any difference or not. Um, so uh, anyway, here we go. Okay, so once upon a time, long, long ago, and some historians think approximately along the lines of about 2,000 years ago, okay, Celtic folks in Europe celebrated the end of a harvest and the start of a new year in a festival called Solwain. It's spelled S-A-M-H-A-I-N, but it's pronounced Solwain, okay? Um, this was, uh, what is Solwain, okay? <laughs> so this is the Celtic festival that started historians believe about 2000 years ago. Now, Samhain was a collection or a day, a collection of time or a day that the Celts believed the spiritual world became visible to humans and the gods enjoyed playing tricks on mortals. So in other words, they felt like this particular day was the day where all of the gods um, came out and, and just played dirty tricks on all those mortals. And also, the spirits of the dead mingled with the humans. Um, so, the Celts, you know, they had a busy harvest season. They needed that harvest to survive through the winter. So they gathered up all their harvest by the day um, and festival known as Samhain so that the evil spirits who had a portal and were returning couldn't damage their goods. So they, um, they must have had a really busy day. And I'm, I'm imagining that there was probably a lot of anxiety that was happening that day. Like, are we getting it all in? Is there anything gonna be ripped off or taken? Um, and they, so they left out, I think in this anxiety and worry, they left out tokens of offerings on their porches and other places to try and appease the bad spirits or gods. And this is where we get the phrase trick or treating and why candy is handed out for free. But I will get to that in a little bit, okay? Um, so let's move on. I, I've labeled all of these. I think we're going to number three. Okay. Now, now the uh, Catholic Church hopped in here, and I'm going to explain how they did this and why they did this. Uh, several hundred years later, um, there was... Okay, hold on a second. I'm getting my notes mixed up. Now, why did the church hop in? Okay, so there was a... Pope in the early Catholic Church, and I didn't write his name down. You guys can go do your own research on this. 590 to 604 
was the time frame for this. In the early church, 590 to 604. And this Pope advised a missionary going to England uh, to, you know, um, preach to these pagans. <laughs> um, that he should, instead of trying to do away with all of the religious customs of these non-Christians, um, that the missionary should try and morph their pagan customs into a Christian one. And that is basically what happened with the festival of Samhain. Um, the Celts' dark supernatural festival, it was eventually given a more Christian flavor, and um, so we have the Celts who were freaked out of their minds about the evil spirits and the Catholic Church was stoked about all of the miracles the saints had delivered. And now um, this missionary rolls in and he's like, hey, let's just sandwich these guys together. We'll just invent a day after Halloween which I'm going to get to the, to the meaning of the word Halloween here in just a minute. Um, let's just sandwich the two together. And so the Catholics invented the next day, November 1st, for honoring the saints to try and drown out the dark side of the Celts festival, Samhain. And so that's why we have All Saints Day, which is established November 1st now, by the Catholic Church, and then before that um, is the supposed dark part of it. Um, okay, so let me let me see. Hold on a second. Hold on. So let's see. The evening before All Saints Day became known as All Hallows' Eve and then later Halloween. So hallow, the word, means a saint or a holy person. And I believe that ween means Eve. So they were trying to kind of throw um, a fresh name over the top of this. And um, the... But the beliefs associated with Samhain never really went away. Obviously today, we're still seeing that Halloween in its essence has a lot of nasty looking things hanging out. Um, and the dark festival was just too captivating for humans to drop. So the church, the Catholic church was never um, completely successful with eradicating that dark part of the cults or of the Celts. I'm sorry, Celts holiday, Samhain. It never went really went away, it, and I don't know that All Saints Day is as popular as the day before Halloween. Um, so somewhere, the name Samhain morphed into Halloween, and somehow it's fine for the Catholics to endorse all the supernatural symbolism and rituals of Samhain and call it spooky fun, okay? So they, I, I guess they kind of operated in a, well, if you can't beat them, let's join them mentality. Um, so why, I, I wanna tell you, uh, Samhain, Samhain was a festival originally Halloween, but digging deeper, this festival was celebrated in honor of the god Samhain, which was the druid god of death, and was, uh, anyway, it, so sometimes we, well, not sometimes, if you look up the meaning of the word Samhain, you'll, you'll get, like, a bunch of mixed, um, things, but it actually means the druid god of death, okay? So let's talk about the jack-o'-lantern thing. Everybody is very familiar with pumpkins, the carved pumpkins, the setting them out on the porch with the lights on in them and, and whatnot, and um, the whole pumpkin patch thing and everything that that entails. Of course, we see them everywhere. It's hard to miss. So what? why do we do this, <laughs> you know? Um, 
And when I say, you know, we, uh, I mean, you know, a, a lot of us do do these, these carving of the pumpkins. Um, so carving the pumpkins or maybe gourds back then was a ritual for the Celts. And the light glowing from the hollowed vegetable imitated the good magic of the sun and represented the harvest as a whole. And they wanted to eat all the way through winter, so they did this to kind of help with that process. They believed that that um, carving out these gourds and pumpkins, and I don't know if they 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 put faces in them or or what they did, but um, they actually believed that this ritual was going to help protect them through the winter from starvation and all of that. Um, so a little tidbit. Also, in relation to the jack-o'-lantern, there's also some lore in Ireland and Scotland about a mythical character called Stengy Jack, who wandered the earth because the devil wouldn't let him in hell. Now, I didn't go expand on the, um, the, that story. I suppose if you're interested, you can go check that out. But uh, that little attachment is on there too and I'm not 100% sure how it relates but uh, that I think is why it's called a jack-o'-lantern. It's got to have something to do with trying to trick this nasty thing called stingy jack I'm assuming. Okay so let's move on to trick or treating. Okay um I I think it is crazy that we do this trick-or-treating thing and have no clue why we're doing it. <laughs> so, bear with me. Celts didn't want bad things happening to their stuff. Imagine that. So they put out goods to make the bad spirits happy and to hopefully leave them alone. Um, now, the Catholics are the ones that seem to be responsible for the jump starting of humans begging at houses for treats in the name of the spirits. So, let's see. This is what I read. Everyone had worked hard for the season and to end it. And remember, this was the final day of harvest. Um, young men wanted to de-stress. Um, and that makes sense, you know. Let's let's celebrate after a long a long season of working hard. Um, so in Scotland, groups of young men called geezers. I know we kind of use the term old geezer sometimes around here in America, um, but geezers geezer actually means. Um, disguise okay so they they threw on some disguises and this was also the beginning of costumes and um they went door to door and kind of tried to beg treats off of people and i guess that they i don't know if they were amused or if they actually were afraid of these young men that were in, in disguises. I mean, I would suspect that in a, in a culture that was highly superstitious like this, that there was probably some elements and humans at the door that were like, oh my goodness, I got to give these guys something. And I'll bet you that that those groups of young men probably were little instigators too in causing disruptions. Of course, we see this a lot on Halloween with um, kids toilet papering houses and who knows what else. There's a lot of dirty things that happen actually on Halloween. A lot of things that we don't know about and aren't aware, but it does happen, okay? Um, so centuries later, the Halloween customs were brought to the U.S. by immigrants, of course, and from an article in a Christian work in the year 1894, it said this, uh, and this is in a Christian work. Halloween is a night when witches, evil spirits, and all mischief-brewing sprites went forth on dark and mysterious midnight revels. Hmm. Okay. So... There is something called Hallowtide, 
which I believe this is um, something in the Catholic Church, which I am not a part of. Um, and they call it a tritium of feasts. And it's three days, and together are the days of the dead in the Catholic Church, Hallowtide, Hallowmas, and Hallowtide. I said, all, oh, all Hallowtide. So Hallowtide, Hallowmas, and ha all Hallowtide. And of course, Hallow means saint, and Mass means mass. And I'm not sure why I'm talking about this. It's just something that is attached to um, the, I think the celebrations there. Um, so anyways, I think that, you know, I think that we human beings, we, we understand the nature of, um, Halloween or Sawain, <laughs> its original name. Um, and it, it is, it's definitely a day that um, some of us have bigger convictions about than others. And I am really not in the mode of like judging people and what they're necessarily choosing to do. But I am about helping us and reminding even just myself as I, as I uh, teach some of these things that I think that the question, like if you consider yourself um, a Christ follower, remember we're not just believers because even the demons and Satan believes in God, okay? So we need to adopt another name for ourselves, okay? That doesn't mean that we're serious. Like how serious are we about our relationship with the Lord? So I think that um, if we're serious about our relationship with the Lord, that we need to be asking ourselves, God, are you fine with me partic participating in the spooky fun? Um, is this okay with you? Does this make you happy? Does this make you feel good? Does this make you feel loved? Am I honoring you in participating in this Celtic festival celebration to the ugly spirits, the, the dead things walking around supposedly, and everything else that it entails. Does this, does this so, am I asking God how he feels about me as a participant? And I think that, um, if we answer that question, say, well, no, I don't ask the Lord about a lot of things. And I wouldn't know what he had to say. So I would say John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Okay. So if we're not able to be hearing his voice, which we're going to get a lot of that from the word and being in the word, um, that's a whole different problem. <laughs> I mean, if you're, if you're saying that you have a relationship with Christ, that's a whole different problem if you don't know what his heart is on things like this. And if you don't care, that's a whole nother problem. Okay. So, um, so the devils, they don't waste opportunities. And remember, I'm always talking about the devils because it isn't just Satan. You know, he's, he's not omnipresent. He's not everywhere at once. He has an army, a military of demons that do his bidding. Okay. Um, so let's use the term the devils. <laughs> and they don't waste opportunity. If people are open to all of this... Um, this nasty stuff, they're gonna, they're gonna, of course they're gonna stamp it with fun and they're going to majorly take advantage of it. Of course, they've, they've been building it up and building it up and building it up. Just look at how Halloween in and of itself is just behind Christmas day. Okay. And, um, it's just behind, it's just behind why is that? Why 
is that? So I want you guys to think about these things. Think about the history of everything. Think about um, yourself and how, how you see yourself fitting into all of this and really go after asking and, and I mean, even just for myself, I mean, I, I'm, I'm constantly having to practice this, asking God what he thinks about things and um, if it matters to him what I do in certain situations or um, certain places or how I honor him, the one and only God that he asks there be no other gods before him none am i doing that okay am i doing that so um i'll end this with have you guys tried this it's called poppy it's prebiotic soda this one's a strawberry lemon flavor and it's actually pretty good um i think it's low sugar but it's um I, I think it tastes pretty good. It's probably pretty good for your tummy, too. So, I, I'd advise sampling it. It tastes good. It is expensive, though, so I would recommend getting a crate of it at Costco if you have a Costco card. Um, but, yep. Okay, so, guys, I hope you are having a fantastic Saturday. And, um, I look forward to... Um, talking again soon to you and um, maybe in the next round I'm gonna show you my new music CD that is actually now out in hard copy and on iTunes okay so um, I think I'll do that next week you can you can find out more about my music and books on prudenceohair.com and getting that website all whipped up into shape so you guys can go check it out and um, see about that new book that's getting released here very soon and yes okay I will talk to you soon God bless